presented by NCAP Insurance. Thank you to our judges, Rob Bremner from the Richard Ivey School of Business, Orle John representing CTA, Sylvan Renal from NCAP Insurance, Brad Restall from MCO, Blair Swiston from Crown Investment Corporation, Mike Van Ellsberg from Intact Insurance. Competitors will have a maximum of 20 minutes to present. Immediately following the presentation, judges will have a total of five minutes for questions. I will show time cards at various intervals to indicate the remaining time, and will stop any speaker who exceeds the maximum time limit. With no questions, comments, cell phones, or picture taking will be permitted from the audience. The audience will only be permitted to applaud following the question and answer period. The audience is banned from any material that bears the name or symbol of a competing university. And we ask that the audience exit the room immediately following the question and answer period. Competitors may be on any.
is like the high pay ratios. With these consistent contracts and long term contract uh, with the uh, tenants, you will see consistent dividend yields, which is what, which will what, which is what will keep your prices high. And finally, we expect that interest rates will remain low for the short term for the year 2013 and into the next few years. And as you saw, this will be preferred investment. With investment with interest rates low, investors prefer to invest in funds such as REITs, which are lower risk but with a higher return than money market funds. So the deeper analysis into the interest rate that I want to touch upon is that in the short term, if we could make the low, this would be a great opportunity for you to invest in REITs due to the fact that these REITs would be a better preferred investment compared to money market funds such as T-bills and other um, products like those. However, on the contrary, in the long term, if interest rates increase, then less risk for investors are preferred. So rather than putting your money into REITs, we'll give you a maybe say 7% return or oh, higher risk. Why not put your money into a T-bill, which would be a lower risk, but almost the same return, but 5%. So this is an important implication when we talk about the same REIT, which you're going to today, and why you should possibly invest in the short term or long term or not at all. So having gone over the real estate investment trust sector specifically, we do want to look for it to be seen as an alternative or an opportunity for your uh, fund to invest into. So we did ident identify three important factors that we wanted to look into. So first being that Zane has long-term contracts. There are some benefits of this, however, there are some downfalls. So first being that uh, they have long-term contracts with credit-worthy customers. And this provides for long-term cash flows, given the fact that there is a high occupancy rate in the real estate investment trust uh, sector right now. This is beneficial for uh, the, this company specifically. Now, some disadvantages, however, is the fact that uh, they can take advantage of potential increases in the housing market. As we see, we do expect that there's going to be a booming housing market in the United States uh, going forward. So what we expect with this is that the contracts that are in place right now may not allow for Zane specifically to take advantage of increased rental rates beyond that of what's already outlined in their contracts. The second being that Zane is a diversified company. So they are both geographically diversified as well as by the properties that they invest in. So they have some retail, they also have some industrial, and so on and so forth. So this decreases the risk. And this is, as we mentioned, a very important thing that we would consider specifically for JDC Investing's portfolio. Some downfalls here to this, uh, this is though that there have been some specific um, properties that have been outperforming, such as, for example, offices over the past year have had 13.6% and commercial about 22. So there are some opportunities within that specifically that uh, they're not maybe taking advantage of to the fullest. And the third point we wanted to touch upon within our research that we conducted was the distribution policy. So they are recommend or they are they have outlined a policy that they're going to be increasing their dividends. So this uh, accounts for inflation going forward. So they will be um, you know, making those payments to you, but not only that, increasing them. So some downfalls here though is they are, with a higher payout ratio, there's less reinvestment which is able to occur, uh, which could you know, potentially their cash flows wouldn't be as strong as they have the ability to be into the future. And also, they may not be able to maintain this dividend level. And for the Real Estate Investment Trust, we believe, or we have, through our research, identified that there are many institutional investors which are investing into REITs for that dividend specifically. So if you're decreasing the dividend or not being able to maintain it, there's potential for a decrease in the value of this company because they're not able to maintain and continue to pay out that dividend. In analyzing the financials and the returns for a business such as a real estate investment trust, we almost look at not only return on equity, but also the sustaining of the dividend. Currently, as you can see on the board, we conducted a quick calculation as to using the market data that was retrieved from the system to determine
determine the cost of equity by which Zane Reed is currently experiencing. Now, currently at interest rates at all time low, at 1% specifically, and a beta of 0.71. This shows that the market currently perceives Zane Reed as a low risk opportunity investment. However, we must compare this to the risk premium of 6%, giving us a cost of equity of 5.26%. Now, the most important part here to notice is that the return on equity currently for Zane Reed over the past year has been 13%. Comparing to the 5.26%, we see that Zane Reed is currently providing an economic value add of approximately 7.74%. Now, by building on this, we understand that Zane Reed is currently investing in projects that build on towards their current portfolio and increase investor wealth. However, is this sustainable in the long term? <coughs> REITs are a lucrative investment. We have identified this. We understand there will be a booming housing market. But the question, is Zane the REIT of choice? We must consider Zane against the opportunity to invest in other REITs or other similar industries that pay that dividend yield and allow institutional investors such as JDC investing to build on their portfolio and achieve those outstanding returns, those risk-adjusted returns specifically. Some alternatives that we decided to look at is, of course, whether to invest and put our money at all and rechange the balance of the portfolio. One implication with this opportunity, however, is that we are not rebalancing a portfolio that in the last quarter has not outmatched the benchmark. Using this, we do not change anything. However, if we were to choose to invest in Zane, we must further analyze the company, and we will build further into this, and we will go into the financials very soon. And finally, of course, is to invest in an alternative REIT, one that possibly has a better return, a risk-adjusted return, that allows us to go not only beyond profit, but address the risk that investors are starting to turn away from. Now, in going through the valuation, the first metric with which we use is, a, is trading comparable. By comparing the price to net asset value and price to funds from operations, you can see on the board that Zane is currently undervalued compared to the average of its competitors. As you are, I'm sure, aware, there is two specific ways, of course, the price to NAV and price to FFO. Now, one key indicator in the price to NAV, however, that I do want to point out is that all the reads that are comparable in this sense are all within 1 or 0 0.9 of the price to NAV. Because of this, we believe that a significant majority of the reads are currently valued close to equal in this metric. So we turn toward the price to funds from operations to judge whether they can continue to build upon their operations and generate enough funds to sustain that also important dividend. Currently, Zane is trading at a 15.2 times multiple, compared to an average of 16.4 and a mean of 16. What this tells us is the market is currently bearish on this investment. We see a significant other opportunity to enter other REITs that have those same price to multiples, but are able to generate larger funds from operation and trade at a lower price to FFO. Because of this, we know there are opportunities outside of the, using these metrics that are could be better than Zane. Now, we ran a couple of valuations through a discount dividend model. However, what you see on the current board is expected growth of negative 10%. The reason we did this is because by using a gross seed function, we were able to find that the discount dividend model currently overvalues um, Zane Reed. Based on a negative 10%, um, negative 10% growth rate of the dividend, we walked through the discount periods of 0.5 for the next four years. The reason for this, at and a discount rate at 5.26%, which we have shown earlier was the cost of equity of the business. Building on the discount factor, we discount the dividends in each future cash flow to arrive at a present value of the next five years of dividends at 4.93. Now, using a perpetual method in which we forecast a 1% growth rate in the perpetual future, what we have reverse engineered is a value that is close to what uh, the market is currently valuing the business at. Perpetual growth rate of 1% was chosen for this business due to a, the slow growth of the lead business, as well as we believe that it will, it will overcome inflation in this sense. Now, 
together at 25.93, of course, the best has done at a negative 10%. Now, currently, we had to move further in towards the dividend as well. The dividend that they are currently paying as of this year is $1.35 per unit that you own of St. Louis. The funds from operation, however, are $1.54. In comparing to two, the two, we understand that the payout ratio in FFO is currently at 88%. Now, while this is sustainable, and we believe this is right, between 75 and 95% would be the industry average, the question is, can they do this in the future with their future dividend policy? The dividend future, the future dividend policy currently, currently states that the business plans on paying out $1.60 for every unit in the future. However, to maintain this 80%, 88% payout ratio the funds for operation, the funds for operation need to grow at a rate of 15.4%. If this is not the case, and same does not meet this growth target, there is a high likelihood that you will not be able to pay out this amount, um, that they will not be able to pay out this amount and stick to their future dividend policy. And the result of that could be institutional investors leaving the business, driving the share price down in the short term, and making Now, I would like to ask them to come forward and quickly walk through the recommendation of why exactly we believe an alternative creep is a stronger investment for the risk at hand in the short term. Yeah. In terms of our recommendation, as we have outlined today, we are confident that REIT is a lucrative market to be putting your money in to expand your portfolio and further diversify it. So we do agree that a REIT is a good opportunity However, Zane Reef, which you brought forward to us, is not the reef to be in, and we are very confident in this recommendation. We do recommend you conduct due diligence with the other comparable companies, and we have also identified one other, being Dundee Reef. What we like about Dundee Reef is the fact that they have office space. As I mentioned previously, 13.6% is the, the returns that they, those in office have experienced over the past year. This is tremendous. So we see that there could be an opportunity here. Of course, due diligence is always required in terms of their strategy, their financial statements, and an intrinsic value calculation based on your thoughts for the future for this company specifically. You need to look at the performance of your current stocks. We think that your holdings, there could be potential within the utility sector. This being said, it's because of the fact that we see also a lot of institutional investors holding these specific types of stocks and utilities for the dividend as well. We think that holding a comparable company in REITs with greater potential growth is a much more, uh, much better investment for your portfolio. We then recommend once this due diligence has been fully conducted and you're confident in your analysis, you will sell your comparable position and buy a REIT position. So immediately, you will need to begin this due diligence process. It is very time consuming, and you need to make sure that you cover every aspect of that business. You want to know it inside and out, so you know that the risk that you are taking on as, as a portfolio who is extremely interested in the risk being moderate for the return that you're receiving, you need to conduct this due diligence. Evaluate your current holdings. Our recommendation may specifically be to look into your utilities. However, that is definitely not where you must look. You can also look at other, maybe potential underperforming stocks within your portfolio. Uh, in six weeks' time, we believe this is enough time to have conducted your due diligence process. Of course, if it is not up to par as to what you feel, you will need to spend a little bit more time on this. And of course, you will sell your underperforming position in place of uh, a reposition and monitor the performance and of course the expectations of the interest rates as this is something that's very important being invested in the real estate investment trust industry you need to have an opinion on what you think expectations for interest rates are we have provided you with ours today in summation we are very confident in our recommendation that real estate investment trust is where you should be putting your money and we would like to recommend to you that Zane is not specifically the one that you should be putting your money into. There are other opportunities within this industry.
you will achieve a higher risk adjusted return, and that is our expectation for your portfolio within JDC Investing. It aligns with your strategy, and we are extremely confident. On behalf of my team here at England Capital, we thank you very much for having us here today. If there's anything we haven't covered or you need more clarification, we'd love to open the floor to any questions you might have. is that's for the short term. We think that in the future, because of the housing market, uh, because of the increase there, we believe that we indicates a growing economy. With the growing economy, of course, there will be increasing interest rates. So uh, in the short term, that's our expectation. We do believe we should be looking for uh, something in the future, of course, evaluating when the interest rates are going to change, at which point you may need to exit your position. Given the risk adjustment, you have a higher return. 